Hey everybody, how's it going? So I wanted to share something with you, and BlackBerry did as well, that I talked about a few months ago, and I think I figured out what's going on here. Again, you know, it's, I'm probably late to the party here, but I just wanted to share it with all of you. So I did a few videos in New York City real estate. I did a lot of these when I was moving, where I was just going over places with my little camcorder and measuring them and seeing what the size of them was compared to what the ad said the size of them was. And just know it's not me. It's the way it's listed. That's yeah. how I get but it. But did you so post the ad or did they post the ad? No, I, you see, they told Why me. Why the fuck you lying? Why? One of the things I went over recently is that in spite of COVID ravaging the city businesses, shutting everything down and causing many stores to be vacant everywhere and have retail space for lease in the window, the prices don't seem to have really gone down. And I was showing you a lot of these places that were still priced at $100, 200 $300 a square foot. And I also talked about this in you know, a couple of other, some of my videos. So I'm starting to figure out what's going on here. So I don't want to use names. I don't want to be specific about industries at all because NDAs are involved here. But one of the things that I've started to learn are that the management companies and the landlords themselves, if they're not using a management company and they're dealing directly with the tenant, are renegotiating leases but they're having them sign NDAs. So let's say you're a tenant and you have seven or eight years left on your lease and you are paying $35,000 a month for a space. You may go to your landlord and say, listen, I know we have a deal, but this city is le is legitimately dead. The court is was backed up six to 18 months before COVID. It's probably going to be backed up for five to 10 years after. You know I don't have the business to be able to pay you this amount of money. We need to work something out or I'm giving you the keys back and, you know, again, best of luck to you. And what seems to be happening are that the landlords are saying, OK, you used to pay 35. How about 30? And the, and the tenant's like, eh, 10. And the landlord's like, OK, how about 25? And the tenant's like, eh, 10. And the landlord is like, how about 15? And the tenant goes like, eh, 10K. And they go and then they finally go, OK, fine, deal. However, there is one caveat. You cannot tell anybody else that you are paying 10. You must let them think that you are still paying your initial rent. If someone figures out that you're paying a lower rent, we are going to make you pay this penalty for breaking this non-disclosure agreement. And the penalty for breaking the non-disclosure agreement, in some cases, is an amount that's almost the entirety of the lease. So let's say that your lease is, um, let's just say it's 10 years at uh, at let's say it's 10 years at $10,000 a month and it doesn't go up. It does go, it does go up. I'm just doing this for math purposes. That comes out to 1.2 million. If you break that non-disclosure agreement three months in and you let other people know what you're paying in rent, you could be on the hook for, you know, $1.2 million, the entirety of your lease. And I think that this is uh, something that's particularly interesting. So the reason that this is being done is because they know that once the cracks start to form, once one domino falls, they all fall, and then everybody is going to want their rent to be lower. Further, no one's going to pay these insane rates. Again, when I go over in this video where you have this room that's going for $30,000 a month, people may just think, well, everything else on this website is $30,000 a month. I guess that's what the price is. However, if people start speaking up about what they're actually paying, then, you know, together, once everybody has the knowledge of what the market rate actually is, the market rate will plummet. And I think that many landlords are scared shitless of this happening for several reasons. A, it lowers their ability to command high asking rents to people who don't really know the city, who don't really understand real estate, to on, on their current properties. B, their tenants in their existing properties may just decide, screw it, I'm out of here, I'm going to leave, best of luck to you, and I'm going to go down the street where I'd be paying half the price. That would absolutely wreck the New York City real estate market, which in my opinion is long overdue for a reckoning. And I'm excited to kind of see that happen. But this is actually a really smart way of preventing that from happening. Because one of the first questions that you may have for the people that are in the next office or in the next store is, hey man, what do you pay? And if they are con contractually obligated to keep their mouth shut or else they will have to pay out 200 or 500 or 800 or 1.2 million dollars, that's a good incentive structure for them to say, oh yeah, I'm just paying the same thing I was before. You know, yeah, you know, I, I paid 30,000 last month. I'm still paying 30,000 this month. Um, that, that's, yep, yep. And that may lower people's uh, confidence in negotiating with their landlords. And I think that this may actually work because the fear of having to pay out from a non-disclosure agreement 
at that that's pretty that's pretty scary and again if you actually got what you wanted if you got yours if your rent was lowered from 30,000 to 10,000 if you got yours you may not particularly care a lot about helping other people get theirs let them get theirs on their own that, that you know I'm typically someone who has very individualistic person, but this is probably one of the, the more negative uh, portions of individualism where it's like, I got mine, I don't really care if you get yours kind of thing. And, and I think that this is obviously a legal and also financial motivator to ensure that people don't share information that would allow this corrupt real estate market to finally crash, which I think it very badly needs to. As I've said in some of my earlier videos, there are places that I looked at in 2011 when I was looking for my store that I rented in 2012 they are still vacant today. They never had a tenant in over eight years because what they're asking is insane. And when you show up to the place, when they advertise it as 1,500 or 1,800 square feet and you measure it, this is what happens. I think that this may actually result in this just getting propped up for a little bit longer. But there's also the alternate. The alternate is that perhaps, maybe, just maybe, if people think, well, I guess I can't renegotiate, I guess there's just no chance here, they might just, instead of try to renegotiate and keep their space, just say, hell, if everybody else is paying 30 and 40k around me, I can't afford that, I give up, they just throw in the towel and leave. It could wind up backfiring, but I don't think it will. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and if you are a business owner in New York City, if you're thinking about leaving, if you're not sure if you should keep your current space, if you don't really know what's going on, if everybody around you tells you that they're still paying exactly what they used to pay, I think this is a really important piece of information to keep in mind. Because when I speak to people, and I don't want to say who because I don't want to toss shit at these NDAs, eh, who actually deal with all of these business owners and see their books, they're all hearing the same thing, that they renegotiated to a much lower rate as a result of the drop in business nearby, and uh, they are not allowed to tell anybody about this. So, so just, just something to keep in mind. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you in the next video. Bye now.